Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Uh, we are coming, bringing for you the blessings and the uh, love of His Holiness, uh, Pope Abba Taraudrus. And He cares for you, and He loves you. And uh, He is always uh, praying for the well-being of His community and His people. And today, the message um, is very important to understand. What do we see? How do we see? Most of the people we have here in the world, they have different perspectives in life. So maybe one thing happens, and then people would understand it in different ways. And that's why it's important to see. It's important to see how God loves us. So I think unless we start to see God's will, God's love, and God's grace in our life, we are still blind. And that's the difference between a human being whose heart is open to see and someone else who's actually within life and he has his eyes open but he doesn't see. And I'll give a little example. Adam and Eve were living in a paradise with the gracious grace of God, the love of God overshadowing them. They needed nothing, but yet, they looked away. They needed something for their own, so they didn't understand the fullness of the being in Christ, in God, but they had started to see something else. They listened to someone else, because their eyes start to see something different. And that's why they lost it all. So the grace of God were overshadowing them. They are in everything they need, but they didn't see it. And why? Because their hearts went to someone else. Look at yourself. Do you see the grace of God in your own personal life? Do you know how to thank Him for every little thing that He gave you? Do you thank Him for being human beings? Do you thank Him for that He is your God? Do you thank Him for the salvation that He gave you? Do you thank Him for everything that you have, for the Spirit of God dwells in you? Do you thank Him for the eternity prepared for you? Do you see that whatever happens in your life, it's gracious. It's the fullness of God's love for you. Most of us, when we fall into the pit of self-centric, the egoism, we start to see only ourselves, only our needs, so we lose the sight. We don't see the grace of God that is given to us. That's why imagine yourself that you fall into a pit, and then this pit happens to be all surrounded with mirrors. Then whatever you see in there, you only see yourself, and in different perspectives, and in different uh, echoing each other, so you become the echo of your own self. I think this person will go crazy in a very little time, and that's what happens sometimes to us when we are over-concentrating on ourselves. Or, if people start to see the others, the people, not God, but they start to see the, the others. So you fall into the pit also of sociocentrism. And that's also, if you put your life in the hands of the others, that you lose it. But if you put your, ha your life in the hand of God and to start to see Him, then you will be always safe. And that's why God wanted to correct our lives in different ways. And He gives us different aspects in life so we will return back. But first of all, change your sights. 
change your direction and start to see him first. The second example I would love to give you, when the people of Israel were going out in the exodus from the land of slavery, from Egypt to the uh, promised land. God made for them great miracles. It's wonders. And they saw it. They felt it. And that wonders that God did for them was just to teach them, to train them, that he is the mighty God who loves them. And then leading them in the wilderness, gave them the manna from heaven, the water from the rock. They were safe and secured. Nothing was lacking. Simply nothing. They had nothing, but they had the fullness of everything. And now after a few years, what did they ask for? They asked for meat. Imagine that you are Moses and suddenly a few thousand angry men is coming to you asking for meat. Angry. And what do you think? How come that leader will bring the people meat in the wilderness. Where they told him, we're sick and tired of this dry food. That's the talking about the manna. Sick and tired of the dry food. They didn't see the grace of God. They didn't see the love of God. They didn't see the will of God in their lives. So that's why they could not appreciate that grace. So they asked for meat. And imagine those people would do what? So if you were God, what do you think you can give them? God is so loving and so gracious. He's so kind and he wanted to teach his people. So he gave them. He gave them to eat the meat. He sent them the birds and then they slaughtered and they ate and they were full. But the snakes he started to attack them. All the snakes were ever there, but they never dared to come closer to one of God's people. But when God's people looked away, the snakes dared to attack them. I think this is a good lesson for all of us. If you look away from God, the snakes will attack. If you just look up to him, you will be healed. When I was young, that very particular story was very intriguing for me because even though God didn't agree on their behavior and on their demands, but still, he gave it to them to teach them. I didn't understand it. And I thought that, why? And that kind of solution that God came up with. I thought that God will kill all the snakes when they returned back and told him that protect us. So I thought that God will do another miracle and kill all the snakes. God doesn't want to kill all the snakes. But he wanted to protect you. According to the will of God, that your will will be his will. So that's why he came up with a great idea and he told Moses, make a copper serpent and lift it up in the wilderness so every person who would look to the copper snake will be healed. Just it's a matter of changing your mindset. It's a matter of changing your perceptions. It's a matter of seeing God in your life. Every person who would look to the copper serpent will be healed. Nicodemus came to Christ secretly. And Christ is telling him about the life and the baptism and God so loved the whole world. So he gave himself up to them. And then he gave him that very particular story. 
as Moses lifted up the copper serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. So every person who believed in him will have everlasting life. If you change your mind, if you looked only to the one who was hanged on a cross, you will be healed. You start to see something different. Even if you are in the uh, uh, den of lions, you will not see the lions. You will see the angel of God. You will see the grace of God overshadowing you. Even if you are in the furnace, he will protect you. If you are in the sea, he will come and tell you, here I am. It's me. Do not be afraid. Just to see the power of God in our lives. To see the love of God that's overshadowing us. That to see our eternity and our life. And if you are able to see that, your whole life will change. You will start to see your humanity much more beautiful than you see it. Then you will start to love yourself. And if you ever to love yourself, you will be able to love your neighbors. You will be able to project the love of God for every person you meet. Then you will not have that stigma on people. You will not say like, I don't like those and I will like those. God loves the whole world. God loves you and he loves everyone else. Because after all, we're human. And that humanity that God created is the pleasure of God to see they are achieving the fullness of their creation. And that's why I want you to see. Open your eyes and see. This blind man, born blind man, he's teaching us today something so important. I don't know. I only know one thing. Though I was blind, now I can see. Maybe we can say that to ourselves. Maybe I was blind before. I didn't see the grace of God in my life. I always demand, I always come to him, and I ask, I want, I want, I want. And we didn't see the fullness of his grace in us. And if you see it, you will understand the well of God. And the will of God will teach you the way. Then you walk the way where he wants you to go. May the love of God overshadow us. May he give us to understand his will. And gives us wisdom. And fills us with his joy. So we can see him. So when we are able to see him, so we rejoice. And no one can take away our joy then we glorify God in our lives. Glory be to God forever. Amen.